Stumpers, what is going on? We are here for an episode of All Ball with my man, Denzel Headphones, and my other guy, Jape, the extraordinaire. How are you boys doing? Doing wonderful. Uh, I'm a little under the weather, but otherwise, not bad. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so we're recording this May 16th. It is uh, actually going to be the conference final opener with the Nuggets and Lakers, but we won't jump too far ahead. We're going to be recapping the second round series on this episode. I think we would all agree the second round series had a lot of hype to them. I don't yeah. know that it necessarily lived up to the hype, though. I feel like there were definitely some like duds. Um, you guys want to start with the biggest dud series? Well, what was that in your mind? Ah, uh, there you go. What was the worst series? Go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna say Nick's Heat. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the other Eastern Conference matchup. I'm saying Celtics Sixers. Really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. I kind of get it. The individual games were all kind of junk. It just it's an interesting yep. series when you look at the whole. What was yours, Parsons? Denver Phoenix. What a lot done. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, mm, again, yeah, that's a good point. I think we. I think we can. De- we're definitely going to talk about each, and we can all sort of nitpick how like there wasn't that full series of like fire like the kings and dubs per se right of the first round yeah um okay how about we start with uh with parsons which is a bit of a hipster answer but i like it uh nuggets take out the suns in six and there was there was maybe a tight game in there which i believe was game four um parsons what was your sort of takeaway from it you did say the suns were a year away i think that was a series you actually called right on the button if i'm not mistaken Uh, i think i had nuggets at seven you did okay you, you, had, you had a great second round. Obviously, the ball was trash, so you dominated. Um, <laughs> what uh, what was your takeaway from it? Uh, the Suns looked farther away than I thought. That Aiton and Chris Paul looked like they didn't belong in this league anymore. Uh, the, the Suns won two games, and they needed Booker and, and Durant to combine for 90 for one of them. Like it was just They were like a, a full tier below, and I didn't expect that. Dan, did you think that this series was priced right? I think it was like the Nuggets were like two to one. Did you? I, I think you and I were sipping the Suns punch, weren't we? Yeah, a little bit. But the thing is, like, like we knew that it all hinged on top four being healthy and engaged. And the instant Chris Paul was dinged up, it was like, that's eh, probably over. Day ends in Y, right? Uh, playoff yeah, Chris exactly. Paul. I, I'm gonna be real though. He he didn't look great to start with. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. There, like, a, there were a lot of signs, man, that the Clips played them so tight in that first round, and we, I think, all of us have underestimated the Nuggets. Like we do a, a TV absolutely. draft where we pick teams, just like one through four, and I'm fourth in the draft order, and I got the Nuggets fifth. It's crazy. Yeah. Like that's so, so nice. far overlooked that team. It's crazy. Um, I don't want to jump too far ahead with MVP stuff, but Jokic looked like the best player in the second round. He looked like the best player in the world. People are going to say Booker. Anyone that listens to this for the first five minutes, they're going to be like, Booker was godlike. Jokic was godlike for fucking six games. It's almost boring. Um, I would say Anthony five. Davis had had a higher ceiling. Mm, true. Lower lows. Lower lows. When I AC's disagree. on. Man, when Jokic needed to, he put 53 on the board. Like, he can score with anyone while doing the rebounds and the assists. He's second among players remaining in points, first in, in assists, and second in rebounds. Like he's dominant everywhere. Can, can we shine some fucking really strong light on probably one of our favorites, I think, as a group, whether we all like Kevin Durant more than we dislike him? They didn't look like yeah. he, he just never really clicked in this series. Even even the two, the two home games for the Suns, uh, games threes and fours, he scored – wasn't as efficient as he normally is. Is that the injury? That was a, that was a Devin Booker show. Yeah, that was injury, Parsons, or is that like just probably what he is now? Is just not as effective as he once was. It's definitely a bit of it. Just maybe he see the writing on the wall in the series, and he like decides <laughs> I'm not going to add any extra any extra wear to the tires. Come back stronger next year. Can't blame him, right? And it, it's hard. It's hard when you're five. And listen, the writing was on the wall with Aiton. The writing was on the wall. It was there. The Suns chose to stick, and that's fair. They did whatever they had to do. I don't know how you thought you were going to get more effort out of him. It's always fucking hard when a guy is deciding when to put forward effort. 
And there are large parts of the series where Lawndale was the better option than Aiton. That says a lot. And the Suns have a ton of questions. Uh, we won't talk too much about the Nuggets because we got to preview them on the next episode. But Monty Williams, coach one, fired. Like it or dislike it? Dan, first. Uh, I'm not. I think, As I was saying it to you earlier, it's the one that surprised me the least. I don't like it. Because, you know, it can always get worse. Like, like head coaches don't just grow on trees. Like, you know, a lot of these franchises, I feel, kind of, like, pulled the trigger on this too early. But I'm sure we'll get into that. But Monty, just with the new ownership, the way that they went out in the last three years, like getting that 2-0 lead in the finals, kind of blowing that. You know, those horrific losses to, <laughs> you know, to the, to Dallas and then to wow. – uh, to the Nuggets, like embarrassing, embarrassing stuff. Uh, I just think it's this, he's the easy scapegoat out of all of these coaches that have been fired. Like this one just kind of like made the most sense in my mind. Before I throw it to Parsons, I want to clarify. I don't, I, I know, I know you're, you're sort of, you're, you're not shocked by this. This can't be their only move though, right, Dan? This can't be the only one. There's something. No, no way. No way. Yeah. yeah, of course. This is like, this is step one. Okay. Uh, Parsons, did you, how did you feel about the firing? Were you shocked? I didn't really get your a little surprised. I'm kind of with Dan. I think it's a lot easier to get worse as at coaching than it is to get better. The, the new owner makes a lot of sense. Like this isn't his guy. And I'm kind of a little more in favor just because bud and nurse are already fired. So there's two top shelf coaching candidates out there. It's a very attractive destination. West Coast, good weather. You got the stars. There, there's a lot there. I'm I'm floored just because. So the new owner thing there, I get it. I just think w- w- with why the Suns lost the series is they were outgunned. The Nuggets had a rotation of seven to eight. The Suns had five dudes. One, one is like 40 on one hamstring. He's done. I don't know how much more any other coach could have got out of this roster. Yeah. Now, I get last year's loss to the maps. Hence why I would have, I told you guys, Aiden shouldn't have been fucking re-signed. And if you told me Monty was gone last off season, I sign off on that. That was pathetic the way they went out this year. It just feels like fucking, you have to have a fall guy, I guess. And also you lost to the one seed. You lost, you lost to the yeah. best player in the world. There's, there's a little more, a little more honor this time around, but it's still pretty bad. <laughs> I, 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 I will just say, KD and Book obviously signed off on it. I want to know if it's not Ty Lue. I, I would love to get their opinion in 365 days from now. Uh, if it's Steve Ty Lue. Coming in. Pardon? Steve I, got, I got a fun one. <laughs> no, I got a fun one. I got a fun one. Got to bring him back. You got to bring him back to Antoni. Keep him out of keep him out of out of Philly. <laughs> bring back D'Antoni. Bring back the seven seconds or less. Fuck it. <laughs> I say bring back Nurse and Bud on like a co-coaching head coach. Cool. Bring, bring back Nurse and Bud as assistants, JJ Reddick, head coach. Super hey, team woo, in Philly. Now we're cooking. Did you, now we're did cooking. you see JJ as the fun one, Parsons, or did you say Steve Nash? But all four. Steve oh, Nash is busy coaching soccer. No, no. JJ head coach, oh, Bud and Nurse as assistants. Steve, Steve, Nash, Nash, super staff. Is, Steve uh, Nash never wants to see a basketball again. Hard to grade the Suns. The Suns are like the student that didn't show up for the year. Like it's hard. It, it was all over the place. Are they so? I guess I'm just going to leave with one last question: Are they getting a third star? Is that the move here? And is his name Kyrie? <laughs> if it is, I'm out. I, oh I'm taking. God. I'm taking back myself oh my on the championship God. next year. Take if they bring Kyrie in. It's it's Dan. It stinks. It smells like it. I think no they way. need to try to move Aiden for like two or three role players, for us, and then bring bring a couple more in. I don't know, like, no, Kevin, Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant knows better. Kevin Durant is still good friends with Kyrie, but it's like, he like lived with him. He, he like, he was, they were roomies and it's like, yo, that's still my guy. I would never live with that guy again. Still my dude though. <laughs> no, my guy, but not that much. Yeah. Yeah. He can crash on the couch for a night, but that's it. Um, I will, I will enclose the Suns are in a really ugly spot here, but they took their Perfect. swing, man. They took their swing and they did it. Um, to me, my most boring series by far. Knicks and Heat couldn't really get up for this one. Uh, timing was a little bit fucky too. So yeah. game one, the Heat thoroughly dominate them. I, I have never been so wrong in a series. 
in my life. Even game to game betting. I was so off on the series. Game one, he kicked the fucking door down. I think they stay rest Jimmy Butler. Like secret. I think they rest him for game two. <laughs> the Knicks barely win game two. Uh, he back to back at home. Nothing really tight. Five back at MSG. Knicks sweep one out and then six is, you know, we're done. Guys, I'm going to be brutally honest. The best player in this series was Jalen Brunson. But fuck, did they overuse him? I think games four, five, and six, yeah. he played every minute. Fucking well, d- didn't uh, didn't Randall just stink up the joint? Randall's, yeah, and, and that's another guy <laughs> I've never been so wrong on. It. Again, I mm. I, can't, I always forget how easy he, he is to shut down. I always right. forget that. Like just a, a good wing and a great coach sort of work. Um, any takeaways, Dan, from the series that shocked you? I think you had Knicks too. Did I have the Knicks? I prob I honestly can't remember. I probably did, but. You know, uh, I think I think that probably just goes to show just like how much the uh, <laughs> how much we we have underestimated the Heat, and rightfully so though. Yeah, I, I mean uh, that's the thing though. Speak for yourself. Like, okay. Uh, I, Parsons anyway. had them beating the Bucks. God fucking damn it! <laughs> no, I, I I thought that was smoke and mirrors. I'd be lying. I, I didn't think they were uh, going to be able to to mimic that. It is funny that we're in a universe now where like the biggest test of the Heat. In the Eastern Conference Finals is going to be the Celtics, and even now I'm, I'm now I'm going to shake because the Celtics haven't looked quite right the whole time. I can't wait to talk about that. I want to talk about the fucking Heat. I'll get you guys say what you want, and then let's jump so, into. Uh, Parsons, give us your your Knicks. If this is like the Knicks RIP, I, I'm surprised Tibbs isn't fired yet. Go ahead. Yeah, I I he never really be. believed in this Knicks team, and this Heat core is just good. Like they've been here, Who's they've had great playoff runs. In the last four was that? Who's their core? Uh, Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, Hero, and Robinson, which aren't doing anything now, and yeah. Kyrie and Kyrie Hero and Kyle Lowry at it. Hero and certainly school. isn't doing anything. You scoff at that, but in the last four no. years, they've made the Eastern Conference Finals three times. Like I agree, this team you. makes deep runs. I agree with you. I'm saying their core is two of those four guys and an elite coach. That's their right. core. It, like Dunk is is sort of and, been revived, and, and Bam Bam is very wishy washy too. Yeah, it's Jimmy, and straight up, the, as much as Knicks fans yeah. are clamoring at seeing the Heat, the Heat must have been just fucking, oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll dummy that team. Um, yeah. Parsons, if, okay, how do I how do I put this? If they switched coaches, I truly believe the Heat still win. The matchups work there. I just, I can't believe you were de- this dead on about this series. I, and I was so off. Uh I think I think it's more Knicks being shit though. Yeah, I, I like I I really dislike this Knicks team uh, in general, but this Heat team just wins playoff games. They they don't do it pretty, but they get it done. Like they play hard team defense, and they've got a guy who can score in the half court whenever he wants, and that that's a very reliable way to win playoff games. If we're being real, I mean, sort of cut dropped in quickly. If we're, if yeah. we're being real. Jimmy Butler didn't even have that good of a series. They were just so much better than them. Like, so much. I was going to say, like, the Knicks kind of got lucky with the matchup with the Cavs because all of us assumed, or maybe not all of us, but I think me and Jay assumed that, you know, Mobley and Jared Allen would, like, you know, combine for, like, at least five offensive rebounds. You know, like, if the Knicks if the Knicks just outgritted them, but, like, you're not going to outgrit Jimmy. You're not going to outgrit Spo. Like it's good fucking luck. Like I don't want to say like heat culture is a thing, but it is a bit of a thing. It's a bit of a thing. They also like Spo. Spo is, is he the smartest guy in the room? Yeah. They they went to the hack a Mitch thing. The Cavs never thought of doing that in the first round. The Cavs never thought like, okay, we cannot. Yeah, the, the, the now most, guy. You know why? Well, because they were scared of Mitchell Robinson. He was eating their lunch. No. Um. <laughs> So Tibbs, would you fire Tibbs Parsons, or do you think he just no, sort of made absolutely. chicken soup? Same thing. Yeah, probably not. They they far expect, uh, exceeded expectations. They got to the second round of the playoffs when a lot of people didn't think they'd get to the playoffs. You run it back. Try to get a little better. It's a good grade. I think Julius needs to be shopped, but you're getting pennies on the dollar, similar to Aiton. You're getting pennies yeah. on the dollar. Yep. 
but you have to. And apparently there is a big superstar in a series we're about to talk about that team got bounced. That if he becomes available, the Knicks will move fucking mountains for Embiid. Apparently that's the talk. I don't know if that's a real thing. I hear that this is the same Nick story about every free agent for yep. the last hundred years. So I, I, I put it zero stock that's- in so didn't, didn't they hire one of Giannis's uncles to be like an assistant coach or something stupid? Like they do this for yeah. everyone. I gotta say, basketball is just more fun when they're good, though. Like Twitter, like win or lose, Twitter is just electric and not all quite, that. But maybe good's too strong, but like this, like five, six seed yeah. range. That's where we need them because okay. they're the best when they're falling apart. Those oh, those Knicks really those Knicks fans reaction videos, those side talk videos are worth the price of admission it's, alone. It's gold. It's gold. Yeah. Agree. Um, quickly just died. He's he's been awful all playoffs. A team like that can't sort of survive without him. Uh, yeah, th- did not watch enough for the series, but I think that's sort of a good thing. My attention was on other series and other things in life. Uh, we good with that one? We're ready to move on to the next one. Yeah, there's, Please. This is a rock fight for the most part. Yeah, uh, Lakers dubs. Uh, Lakers taken down at six. Um, I like the Lakers pre like pre flop. As the series sort of shook out, I liked them more and more. I thought this should have been done in five, if I'm being brutally honest. Um, mm. I'm not going to knock the Warriors. I, I'm not going to sit here and, and talk in. I, I'm not. I, I'm really not. I think I think it really just goes to show Steph's a fucking magician in 22. And yep. what he did last year sort of overshadowed their weaknesses. And and Jordan Poole and all that shit happened in the offseason. Um yeah, I, I, I say power to Lakers. Who wants to run with this one? I, I want to start. I want to start. I want to just say to you that your boy, Clay Thompson, Awful. has let you down in that. Mm-hmm. Now, historically, career-wise, this is an outlier, but he stunk it up. He's getting, he's getting a weird lack of uh, scrutiny here, and I know why. I mean, it's not a weird lack. He's getting a lack of scrutiny, and it's deserved. But, like, a lot of flack that's going to Jordan Poole, which is deserved. Also, you need to shovel some of that onto Clay. Bingo. That's all I'm going to say. Game six of Clay was ugly. Ugly. Oh, his Ooh. defense, too. Sorry? He can still hit the shots, but his defense is gone. Yeah. I mean, but after the injuries, I, I wasn't really expecting yeah. that to be there. You know what I mean? Like, that, what are you going to do about that? So, so you think his pass is – he's getting a pass because of his injuries or because of four rings? Both. Both. I think it's four rings. I think people he, – he Oh, it's absolutely – but he loves he, – he'll he throw that up at the drop of a hat. He he had one of his best shooting seasons. Like that, sure, it, yeah. It, it was a bad stretch. Guys, the Lakers are really tough to score on. They really yeah. are. Again, Clay deserves more blame than people will throw, and I'm a big Clay guy. Big. He definitely was probably the starter with the worst series, wire to wire. But – I think even with the really good clay, did they beat the Lakers? I don't think so. I think this Lakers team's fucking bitchy. And I sort of like that we haven't really talked about them on all ball all season because it's like, whoa, they're here. Cool. This is, this is the best version of them to talk about in years. So, like, thank God. You you can't even make eye contact with the camera talking positive about the Lakers. It's so <laughs> nasty. It's like you look away. You're, like, looking at the corner of the wall being like, that's the best. You version. know what? I, I don't – I don't – okay. This version of them I don't mind. But, like, I just had to hear about them for so long. And they were so clearly ass. And I'm like, let's talk about the Nuggets. Let's talk about – I, I was pretty sick of the, I was pretty sick of the Nets at that time, too. But, like, there were other – you know what I mean? There were other better, more fun teams. I were, like, the, the, the Kings, the Kings come up. A lot of that was overshadowed this year yeah. because we're still hearing about the fucking – Russell Westbrook on a team that he clearly doesn't belong on. Like, I was like, this is so unfortunate. And then all of a sudden people are like, oh, they, they – there's a beam when they win. It's like fucking June. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, What did you think, Parsons? The Warriors just looked a step older, step slower. And when you're not getting like career performances out of Pool and Wiggins, those lack of burst from the older the older boys just seems that much more prevalent. Like they really need the role players to elevate to keep that core pushing forward. And huge shout out to Draymond and, and Steph because they both played incredible. It's just not enough when the team around you isn't isn't doing anything. Yeah. Not not saying you're wrong, dude, but you just called the Warriors the old boys. 
with a team facing LeBron. It's because the Warriors are always there. They feel old. I'm with you. Feels like fucking they are old. I bet their average age is older than the Lakers because the Lakers is just one guy. Sure. I I also counter counter to I counter to that is that not not that he was the best player in the series. LeBron had moments that he looked like 28. Like LeBron had moments in this series, quarters, stretches, and Steph didn't. Steph, I think, battled the same thing. You know, the parallel hockey, the Tampa Bay Lightning looked a little bit slower, a little bit older. These runs, yeah. they tax, they, they, you know, and I agree with you, Parsons. I think a lot of casuals won't realize how good Draymond was in the series to guard a seven footer. That's a really tough ask of him. He, he was well, that's Draymond's, that's Draymond's bread and butter, though. He, yeah, that's it. That's what he always does. I know, but he was as, as good as he was. AD just had, had an answer for it every other night. If we're going to be real. Yeah. AD's, AD's floor. That's, that's why I think Jokic was the best player in the second round. AD's a good counter. Booker's a good counter. But AD is their best player, game in, game out, if they win a ring. That's it. LeBron's got to have moments. Yeah, no, AD agreed. Player. Yeah, LeBron's so absolutely. Good. Who? LeBron is just so fucking good every of night. He is. But, you like, he does have – he takes quarters off because he has to. And even when he is, he's still – he's impacting the game. Yeah. I just think – their offense, when it flows through AD, and you have to draw doubles, and the Lakers now can shoot threes. That was always the thing we always said. If they can get knockdown shooters and guys that can confidently shoot, Austin Reeves, Dennis Schroeder. There was a Lonnie Walker game. Who had that on the big over? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Came out of nowhere. <laughs> Fucking Lonnie. Yeah, apparently, LeBron did. He's full of shit. So I'm, I'm gonna be. Re- of course, LeBron's full of shit. I'm gonna be real. Fell asleep. Third, third quarter, midway through in that game. Woke up. Mm. I thought I was being trolled with the Lonnie Walker game. The clips. I had to watch it. I'm like, what the fuck? Lonnie Walker hit a big shot? No, he had a great fourth. Um, you know what's funny? LeBron, terrible from beyond the arc that game. <laughs> He's just not God even, awful. Skip Bayless yeah. has been on this. He can't shoot threes. But you know what? If he shoots threes and it makes him happy, he's like Winnie the Pooh. It's like, yeah, cool. Give him more honey. He's getting fat. And now it'll just take you to the hoop. Um is this the, is this the Warriors dynasty done? I'm not putting any dirt on the grave yet because you're scared. But if I but if I put a gun to your head and they gave you ten beers, you're burying them. I, I feel like what it really comes down to is what is Joe like willing to pay? Because the new CBA structure, they have something like 250 million in just tax. Right. Is he willing to spend that money and keep it together? I don't know. But if this team comes back exactly as it is. They can beat anyone in a series. Like, they can just shoot you out of it at any moment. They re-signed Draymond? I don't know. Like I said, with the new tax system, it just comes down to how much money does Joe Joe Lake feel like lighting on fire. Yeah, the new CBA is definitely going to throw a wrench. Uh, Dan, are you RIPing this dynasty or – I was too early when I did it after the Raptors beat them. I will, I will admit that. Uh, now, absolutely. Now it's RIP Bozo, all that, you know, like, I think it's a wrap. And my, my piece of evidence for that is if you've seen Steve Kerr's recent comments on the, on the nature or like on the, you know, how his team is looking right now, I'm not saying he's checked out. I think that he knows this is done like this either like, th- like they're not going back unless there's massive, massive changes. And I don't think he anticipates that happening in an adequate way. Myers gets a lot of love, but the miss on James Wiseman is sort of where this, like if James Wiseman is anything close mm. to what he was supposed to be, their their reload here is scary, but thankfully it missed. Yeah. And they have a lot of like cool pieces, like hipster, like Kaminga could be something moody, but if that Wiseman thing hit, we would have been talking about this team for until Steph's career is done. I'm, I'm putting a stake in him. With this current construct, I think if you run it back, probably get here again next year, maybe to a conference final at most. Um, yeah, what, what a weird sliding doors! If the T Wolves take James Wiseman instead, and they get they get Ant, like imagine, Ooh. like you probably don't re up on on Clay the same way, and then that money opens, and the the door is just fucked. Yeah, up. I guess the T Wolves never would have, but if the lottery falls different, yeah, and the Bulls or Hornets had the one the number one pick, they. Wiseman was the number one guy that whole season. I'm not saying Wiseman was a bad pick. You you know I'm not yeah, saying no. that. I'm just more saying. No, no, I understand. Yeah, I'm just looking at the draft and I'm like, 
there was never there was no way the T Wolves would ever take Wiseman with Cat, but the Hornets or Bulls probably would have. Yeah, and then, and then Ant is in Golden State, and man, that would that would have been a fun team. No, but you see, I, I'm opposite. I, I want to put a stake in these dynasties. Like Dan, how you said you put one too soon on the Warriors. I did that with the Patriots three times. They just kept coming back in my face, and it's just eventually they die. Eventually, it just it hurts a lot. The wallet. Um, I'm glad I can be a Steph fan now. I'm glad I I, I can truly enjoy. He's one of the best. Yeah, he's fucking insane. I, I don't give a shit that he he had this weird stat where he didn't hit big shots, and it's like whatever. He just hits shots every other. Fo- he's unguardable. Um, sorry. Last thing on the Warriors: Do you move Jordan Poole? Yes or no, Parsons? Yes. Wow. Oh, hey, that's a, that's the real question. You, hey, just like you, you, you want to move Aiton? I agree. Jordan Poole has to be moved, um, or Draymond does. I think that was bigger, and we talked. I think about Aiton's that. a much more attractive piece than than Poole. Yeah, I think they're both fucking duds. <laughs> I mean, I think they're both duds for their own thing, and the money's a lot different for the two. I believe, if I'm not I'm mistaken. Not right. now. Jordan Poole's contract is absurd. Twenty nine. Yeah. They, but they, they literally had one of the greatest contracts in NBA history with Steph on the same. They have almost identical contracts. To be honest, it's like three million different. What they did with Steph back in the day, they they took a flyer on him. It worked. This is a strikeout. Myers Myers gets a lot of love as he deserves. He's built a dynasty. Who says no to that straight up? Oh, that that's that's the most funny thing I've I've seen that floating. It's like whoa. Uh, I mean. I do. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I'm out. I hate both Pool for eight, straight up. Headache for headache. It's true, though. It's, it's yeah. It's, it, who did Russ get traded for in that way a couple years back? Russ for Wall? John Wall? Yeah. Shit contract for yeah. shit, shit contract. Yeah. Um, okay. Probably one of my favorite series in recent memory. The 76ers and Boston Celtics. Because both fan bases, I feel like I had them on their knees, ah. like begging for, like, forgiveness. Just like, oh, no, no, no. Like, we're okay. We're, we can make this happen. And it obviously came down to game seven when the Celtics just pummeled them. Uh, Sixers jump out to the one nothing lead, minus Embiid. Yep. They bring Embiid back for game two, which I don't know if you guys felt the same way I did. I thought that was a bad move. I think just roll the dice again. Brought him back. Uh, lost it. But back to Philly, lose game three. Somehow steal game four at home, which is like, whoa, you stole that game back from the – the, the grips of death. Game five, you hammer the Celtics in Boston. Hammer them. I, I don't remember a Boston team and a crowd sounding so pathetic. I was like, I oh. thought that series was over Me after too. game five. That, that felt like porno. I was like, oh, yeah. My God. I was they like, I can't fucking playing. believe this team. Oh. I couldn't believe that team looked that bad. Then the series all changes at 83 81, four minutes and change left. The Sixers could not hit a shot after that. I know I'm fast-forwarding a lot of things here, guys. I do think that's where the series totally moves. You had a shit Tatum game. A shit Tatum game. Like, remember, I, I joked in the group chat. I'm like, this is the Tatum game. I yeah, swear to God, he, he goes on like, score like 14. Like seven points with five yeah. minutes left in the game. He scores like 14 after I dropped that message. Yeah. just doesn't miss. Oh, it was, yeah, it was like a minute later it started. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, cool. Game seven, torture chamber for both fan bases. Um, we're only going to talk Celtics at a primary for the, the preview for the conference final. Uh, Sixers, wh- where do you go? What do you feel? Let me know. We got we got 10 minutes left on this EP, so both you guys give it to me. I have no idea what they do now. Harden's a UFA. I don't know what Harris and Max's contract situations are like off the top of my head, but they are in a fucking strange spot where I have no idea what they – what they should be doing. Well, you're there. Look up PJ Tucker's contract. 11 points, first quarter, game seven, Dan. PJ! <laughs> Didn't matter. Didn't matter. <laughs> I'm fucking around. I'm around. I just, he was on fire. I threw it in the chat, and then I deleted if anything, it. If anything, like, uh, what a waste of a PJ Tucker game. It's true. <laughs> 11 points in first quarter. Oh, Very my true. God. What a, that's a war crime. Um. What, where do the Sixers go from here, man? Uh, I think you got to move on from James Harden. I think you just – like, letting him walk is, like, good God, like a disaster. But, like, I, you know, it always kind of feels that they have never embraced Maxi enough. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and it's so unfortunate because the kid's talented. You can tell. And 
I don't know. Like, I, I don't think there's really much they can do. I don't think there's, like, a free agent out there that's waiting to save them in the wings. Especially because apparently this year, like, the free agent class is just kind of doo-doo. Like, yeah. I, I, I think the Sixers, if anything, just got to gotta grin and bear it. Maybe, I don't want to say tank, but, like, you know, if Joel's knee isn't quite right, I feel like we're not going to see a lot of Joel Embiid this, this season. They're going to lose a lot of games. Maybe they can come back in two years with a plan with someone new. Uh, you know, oh, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to. The process is never ending. It's never ending. <laughs> and also, don't forget about all this. You know, like breaking news today, they got to find another head coach. What a fall guy! It's such bullshit. Uh, did you find out that I I don't know why you're so mad at it. Like I think it makes a lot of sense because just in, because in terms of optics, in terms of optics, if this parlay... is it his fault, no, but. Mm-hmm. If this parlay is into Harden staying, I like it. They got one more run at it. Harden's got a player option, which he will not take. He's going to get a new contract. Right. Max, he's got one more deal, one more year, and Tobias Harris got one more year. Harden, so to be honest, the whole team, the whole back. team is done next year, except if, for Embiid. If Harden said he's coming back, Dan, but Doc's got to go, and obviously Embiid's signature has got to be fucking there. Yeah. Who do you bring in to such a Dude, what was that team ceiling? They were the third best team in the Eastern Conference by a mile. But this was like their their quasi their quasi conference championship. This was quasi, but it shouldn't have been because the Bucks should have still been around. Yo, if they played the Heat straight up, are the Heat not favorites? Like they're not that good. That's the Sixers' fault. They're not. I was I was gonna say like I feel like the Sixers team. Like, there's a lot of weird, like, smoke and mirrors going on in this conference right now. Because I feel like they would have a tough time. Not that they would lose, but they would have a tough time against the Knicks. Like, that would be a seven-game series. Yeah. You guys want to hear a hot one? They would struggle with the Toronto Raptors. And they're not fucking good. That's a real, real conversation. They beat the Raptors in five or six? Sure. Fucking rock fight. Like, that's what I'm saying. Where Doc... Listen, Doc stinks. I'm with you, Dan. He's not a good coach. It just seems lame. It's a lame moment to let him go. Um, the team is done after this year, you said, right? Parsons, the band's done. They've, they've got this coming season, 23, 24. And then after that, everyone's free. They fall, they, they crumble. Yeah, they're 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 cooked. So they got one more push at it. If they can break like admit if they can convince Harden to come back, the only people they have under contract for 25 or 24, 25 is Harden and MB, and everyone else is gone. You guys, you guys know, obviously, we live in a fucking a city that has a core four that everyone's talking about ripping apart in hockey. There's a real world here where the Sixers have like a core four, right? The same four dudes that have hard is the newest addition. No one really talks about like Tobias Harris. I don't know what he really gets you on the open market, but a Tobias Harris, James Harden sign and trade, get pieces back. Maxi needs to be featured. That's a real thing. That's a note I had here. Tyrese Maxey is a like not a superstar. He's a star, and he's a good yep. second. I, I think yep. the ball the ball being primarily in Harden's hands was a bit of a problem for them. Uh, Harden had two fucking legendary games in the series, and he had three mm-hmm. or four duds. That really what you want to run it back with? That's why I don't like the Doc fire. Right? I mean, hey, uh, you know what though? By that logic, would you want to run it back with Embiid? Because that was a flop series from him. You you called it, Dan, when we first started doing this the show. First, you're like, his knees, to bank on that man's knees is so oh, difficult. Man. And guess what the Sixers did? They're like, oh, yeah, Dan, we're going to play him 75 games. So he can win a fucking MVP. And tell me that guy doesn't, like, he screams load management. He screams it. Go yes. Ahead. He like, spends a third of the game on the floor. Like, there's. It's, it's hard to watch him, man. He's so yeah. He's not, he's not my type. I, I, Dan. I, I think I, I joined you in the Embiid hate party and I lapped you. I fucking that. I, he, he, him and Marcus Smart, get them the fuck out of my face. Get he won me a fantasy league this year and I'm still like, buddy wow. stinks. <laughs> I, I think I think your thing was wrong. I think I, I don't believe he's the only MVP to never go to the conference final. But if that's fact, I love that. It's like beautiful. He's the only one to have never gotten to one, like not in that season. Wow, crazy. Oh, like ever. Just yeah. never get that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got you. Fair. Um, yeah. My closing point. It's so the, fixable. My closing. My closing point on the Sixers. He kind of stinks in the playoffs. Like, when the whistle isn't always there, like, he's only twenty three points a game. Like this. This, this postseason. 
He was barely more effective on offense than Desmond Bain. Joel Embiid and James Harden are two of the best regular season guys in recent memory and two of the worst choke artists. Now, Joel has had big games, obviously, but like, you know, ooh, he beat up on the Raptors last year. Like, good fucking job. Whatever's actually mattered. Yeah. I'm not saying that he like, disappears, disappears, but he hasn't got the job done. I will say, with Joel Embiid, he deserves all he's going to get for this entire summer because he is very, he's a very likable man. He is. He's very, very enjoyable to listen to on a mic. Uh, I know he had a really, really shitty edited snippet that he sounded really yeah, bad. Yeah, bad. That was, that was poorly edited, I think. But yeah. I, I'll, I'll just say, for someone that talks so much about wanting his MVP and wanting this and wanting that, and you know what the Philly fans want is a conference final appearance, is, is an NBA title. And they're no closer than they were. They are the Toronto Maple Leafs. They are. They're the Toronto Maple Leafs. It gets more and more expensive. They, they fucking have the same problems the Leafs do. People think they're a coach away, man. I, I do believe the Sixers are are a mess. And I'm really glad, as you guys know. I'm really glad. Um, before we wrap, can I can I get a Philadelphia 76ers coach that works there? I lose my answer for every single vacancy, by the way. Ty Lue makes sense everywhere. I think yeah, like, I don't think I don't I don't think they I don't think they 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 get Ty Lue though. I think there's if he's gonna leave the Clippers, there's just better options. Monty than the Sixers. Yeah, I don't know. Like I just I wouldn't touch Monty. Like you want an NBA champion? What Nick Nurse or Bud? Bud, <laughs> Bud it's the Sixers. Fuck that. I'm not giving Nick Nurse the fucking Sixers. Fuck that. Oh my god, guys. Hot- Sorry, hot take. I also think the Celtics will have a coaching vacancy, title or not. I really do believe that. The really? Celtics, no issues. way. They have coach issues, man. Yeah, yeah they, they have a coach issue, but like they just signed them long term. Because they're done. They if they lost that series in game seven, he's fired. He's fired. I don't know. Am I crazy for that, Parsons? No. He's out. Like, dude, you cannot go from NBA finals to losing to the three seed who you're better than. That's two different guys, though. Missoula stinks. Missoula's not a good coach. That's why he's not great. He's not great. This series, Udoka, man, the, the Adoka personal issues, uh, man, like, uh, like that, that pussy better have been worth it. Because man, oh man, that's an NBA, that's an NBA champ in my opinion. If he stays, their defensive intensity is so different with yeah. without him. It's crazy. Yeah. That's the only real difference I see. But maybe there's yep. one. And more threes, more threes under Missoula. True. Um, guys, ready to wrap? We good? Yep. 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 All right. Stuffers, I hope, you guys enjoyed the, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment. In like 34 seconds, we're going to be recording the preview pod, so stick around for that. Cheers, Stuffers.